Greetings friends around the world. My name is Alexander Sarsevedic for the Bible News Prophecy Programs. Greetings and welcome. Indeed, we have seen a dramatic changes and dramatic events in the country called Sri Lanka. The situation in Sri Lanka is getting worse. Much of the economy has collapsed, fuel is unavailable for most, and food is getting scarce. People are protesting indeed. In order to attempt to assist, now former Prime Minister of Sri Lanka has turned to Russia. In fact, on 7th of July 2022, Sri Lankan President said that he had asked Vladimir Putin, the President of Russia, to help his cash-strapped nation import fuel as it faces its worst economic crisis since independence from Britain in 1948. Gotabaya Rayapaksa said he had a very productive discussion with Mr. Putin. Now, it comes after Sri Lanka's energy minister warned at the weekend, several weekends ago, that the country may soon run out of petrol. And indeed, that is what happened. Even, you know, as the weeks have gone by, hundreds of people took to the streets of the capital, Colombo, to protest against the government. Now, attempts by Mr. Rayapaksa to resolve Sri Lanka's worst economic crisis in more than 70 years, including securing financial support from India and China, have so far failed to end weeks of shortages of fuel, power, food and other essential items. A couple of weeks ago, Energy Minister Kanchan Viesekera said that the country only had enough petrol left for less than a day under regular demand. Annual inflation hit a record high of 54.6% in June, and the cost of food rose by more than 80%. The former Sri Lankan president, Gotayabaraya Paksa, said also that he had spoken with Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin to seek credit help in order to import fuel. The island nation is in the, in the midst of its worst economic crisis in seven decades, with the situation triggering anti-government protests, which resulted in both the minister, prime minister, and the president of Sri Lanka resigning from their posts. However, let's quote the former president. He said in a tweet, had a very productive telecon with the Russia president Vladimir Putin. Raya Paksa also thanked Putin for the support of the Russian government has extended in the past. Now, Sri Lanka has struggled to import essentials, leading to shortages of medicine, food and fuel caused in large part by the COVID-19 pandemic. The Reuters news agency cited doctors as saying the entire health system could very easily collapse. Many Western nations have cut off energy imports with Russia in response to its invasion of Ukraine. However, Sri Lankan Prime Minister, now former Prime Minister, Ranil Vikramesinghe, said that his country would follow suit and look for other sources first, but it had not been successful. So Sri Lanka had already made oil purchases from Russia and indicated that it, will will, it was willing to make even more of those purchases. Now, Russia has indicated it will provide some assistance India has also provided some assistance. Now, there are concerns that the lack of fuel can worsen and it can make food availability uh, to be even more scarce, as well as food production in Sri Lanka. On July 7, 2022, the United Nations put out the following information, and I'm quoting it now from the United Nations source. We are witnessing a tragic series of events that are unfolding in Sri Lanka right now that should be a warning to anyone who thinks that, you know, it is up to countries themselves to figure out how to deal with this crisis, said Achim Steiner, administrator of the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, in reference to the South Asian nation's debt default last month, the first in its history. And Mr. Steiner added, that default essentially means the country is no longer able to pay or not only service its debt, 
but actually to import fundamental parts of what keeps an economy alive, whether it is petrol or it is diesel, whether it is fuel, whether it is medicines. Now, the warning came as new data from the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, indicated that the number of people affected by hunger globally rose to 828 million in 2021, an increase of about 46 million since 2020 and 150 million since the outbreak of coronavirus. According to United Nations uh, Food and Agriculture Organization, and according to other United Nations reports, the impact of the global food, fuel and finance crisis on global poverty has been drastically faster than the stock of the COVID-19 pandemics. Well, friends, we are seeing more reports of food shortages as well as food price inflation. These seem to be signs consistent with the ride of the third horseman of the apocalypse. Those in Sri Lanka and in many parts of the world need our prayers and our support, indeed. As far as Sri Lanka itself goes, it is an island nation just off the southern tip of India. Anyway, do not think that Sri Lanka is just a distant land and nothing like what is happening there can occur in the West. Government policies around the world, including ones related to government handling of COVID, have set many parts of the world up for inflation and other troubles, as has the Russian-Ukrainian situation. Now, did you know that the sanctioned lands of Russia and Belarus are dominant suppliers of ingredients used in modern fertilizers. Are you aware that the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization estimates that 33% of the farmland in Ukraine may not be planted and or harvested because of Russia's special military operation in Ukraine? Are parts of the world like Sudan, Lebanon, and the United States of America experiencing food price inflation. What about impact on the Palestinians in Gaza? Could any of this help lead to the rise of the King of the South, as prophesied in Daniel chapter 11? What are some factors that look to increase rice prices? Did Jesus Christ warn of wars and troubles? What are three foods that Ukraine exports that are associated with the shortages and food price inflation of the right of the third horseman of the apocalypse. What does Jesus say his followers should do? Well, the continued Church of God has indeed addressed all of these matters and has been addressing for years. Obviously, we can expect more troubles in Sri Lanka, we can perhaps ex expect more protests and more hunger in both Sri Lanka and other countries. In Mark chapter 13 verse 8, Jesus Christ warned us that there will be more troubles and that we are expecting to expect those most, more troubles in many parts of the world. He warned to us that there will be the beginnings of sorrows that there will be earthquakes and famine and wars around the world. And of course, all that should motivate us to pray for God's kingdom to come. In Matthew 6, chapter 10, Jesus Christ warns us to seek first the kingdom of God. In Matthew 6, verse 33 as well, seek you first the kingdom of God and all the other things he said will be added to us. So, we know that all of those beginnings of trouble are leading actually to the climatic event in the Bible as prophesied in the words of Jesus Christ as the Great Tribulation. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30, verse 7, it's called Jacob's Trouble. Now, of course, Jacob had 12 sons, and uh, in Genesis, chapter 49, just prior to his death, he summoned all of his sons and told them what 
will be their descendants, the descendants of his 12 sons, what they will be fulfilling in the end time, in the end times and in the end days. Well, indeed, we're, we have been living in those end times. And then later, this Jacob's trouble, which is termed or dubbed as uh, the Great Tribulation in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21, those uh, troubles are specified by Jesus Christ as hunger, as earthquake, as earthquakes, hunger, as uh, various wars that might happen. And then he said that those were all the beginnings. He also said that Christians would be hated from all from all the nations around the world for his name's sake. And then he said that the Great Tribulation would start. It will be the most horrible thing and in prophesied in the Bible as the most horrible history events, as the most horrible historical era, you might say, for a whole humankind. And uh, Jesus Christ, therefore, warned us to pray always and to watch the world events that we might be accounted worthy to escape all those horrors coming. And he said it will be the hardest, the most horrible uh, period in human history that would last for three, basically, uh, two and a half years, and it will be followed by the heavenly signs, which would then followed by the day of the Lord when Jesus Christ will be directly now meddling into the world affairs and when the remnant of Israel will start to be delivered and with the goal to return into its promised land. So therefore we see that all of these various events are taking place around the world and indeed we're commanded to watch them. We're commanded to watch them and to recognize the signs of the times in which we are living. We are living, obviously, in the end times. And all of these things God is allowing, not because he hates humankind, dear friends, but because he allows us to see them and to repent. Repent of our wrong ways, because all of these things and all the evils in the world and the main problems of all of human race all around the world is the, the, uh, the breaking of God's law, which is sin. Sin is in Bible in First John chapter 3 verse 4 defined as breaking of God's law. Those transgressions indeed have brought our world to this state because the world wants to live without having to submit to God, without, the world wants to live without being submissive to the eternal God of heaven. The world wants to go its own way. Ever since the Garden of Eden, since our first humans, our parents, Adam and Eve, decided to go their own way without submitting themselves to God. God has allowed humanity to experiment. And because they've chosen, our parents have chosen the tree of the good and evil, God has allowed them to experiment with good and evil and to define for themselves without God's influence and God's inspiration what the good might be and what the evil might be. And we are seeing right now that all of that is coming to the point that we are just desperate. We see that all world evils are not being solved. The governments are trying to solve them. The science are trying to solve them. Education are trying to solve them. Materialism and money, some people try to use to solve them. But all of this human knowledge, all of human money, all of the finances, all of the efforts that are not directed by the eternal are indeed doomed to failure. That's exactly how it has been. Why? Well, because humanity does not want to repent of its wrong ways and submit to the eternal. However, there are still chances for individuals around the world, individuals out of all nations, to become repentant, to turn to eternal, trust in God and to live by faith and not by sight. Now, that is the most important decision that any personal human can make. Well, with all that, friends, with that thought... I want to finish with this program. My name is Alexander Sashavelis. This is Bible News Prophecy Program. For more information and more analysis on world events, please refer on internet to www.biblenewsprophecy.net. Until next time, goodbye friends.